Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. This file is being recorded for the September 2021 edition of Socialism for All. And it's an audiobook and the original Russian audio of Lenin's Communication on the Wireless Negotiations with Bela Kuhn. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this file, this is a gramophone recording of Lenin speaking in March 1919. This is right after the Russian Revolution, the successful one, in which the Bolsheviks took power, and it's about a year into that, and they are trying to establish a new socialist order in Russia. So I'm going to read the English translation as an audiobook, and then I'm going to play the MP3 of Lenin speaking with the English translation of each passage on the screen. So... I knew Comrade Belakun very well when he was still a prisoner of war in Russia, and he visited me many times to discuss communism and the communist revolution. Therefore, when news of the Hungarian communist revolution was received, and in a communication signed by Comrade Belakun at that, we wanted to speak to him and ascertain exactly how the revolution stood. The first communication we received about it gave us some grounds for fearing that Perhaps the so-called socialists, traitor socialists, had resorted to some deception, had got round the communists, the more so that the latter were in prison. And so, the day after the first communication about the Hungarian Revolution was received, I sent a wireless message to Budapest, asking Belakun to come to the apparatus, and I put a number of questions to him of such a nature as to enable me to make sure that it was really he who was speaking. I asked him what real guarantees there were, for the character of the government, and for its actual policy. Comrade Belakun's reply was quite satisfactory and dispelled all our doubts. It appears that the left socialists had visited Belakun in prison to consult him about forming a government, and it was only these left socialists who sympathized with the communists, and also people from the center who formed the new government, while the right socialists, the traitor socialists, the irreconcilables and incorrigibles, so to speak, left the party, and not a single worker followed them. Later communications showed that the policy of the Hungarian government was most firm and so communist in trend that while we began with workers' control of industry and only gradually began to socialize industry, Bela Kuhn, with his prestige, his conviction that he was backed by vast masses, could at once pass a law which converted all the industrial undertakings in Hungary that were run on capitalist lines into public property. Two days later, we became fully convinced that the Hungarian Revolution had at once, with extraordinary rapidity, taken the communist road. The bourgeoisie voluntarily surrendered power to the communists of Hungary. The bourgeoisie demonstrated to the whole world that when a grave crisis supervenes, when the nation is in danger, the bourgeoisie is unable to govern. That sounds like today, doesn't it? And there is only one government that is really a popular government, a government that is really beloved of the people, the government of the Soviets of workers, soldiers, and peasants' deputies. Long live Soviet power in Hungary. So, that's the end of the audiobook. And just by way of history, unfortunately, while this Hungarian Soviet Republic was very popular and did come to power very quickly, it also was very short-lived. There were conflicts between France and Hungary, and then Romania basically invaded them. And then there was a terror, anti-communist terror, uh, white counter-revolutionary terror, very punitive. And then um, there was a right-wing government for a long time. So, unfortunately, kind of a sad story. Uh, happy beginning, sad ending. But now let's switch to Lenin's audio, and you can hear the original Russian. <laughs> И не раз приходил ко мне беседовать на темы о коммунизме и коммунистической революции. Поэтому, когда пришло сообщение о венгерской коммунистической революции, и при том сообщение, подписанное товарищем Белокун, нам захотелось поговорить с ним и выяснить точнее, как обстояло дело с этой революцией. Первые сообщения о ней заставляли несколько опасаться, не было ли обмана со стороны так называемых социалистов или социал-предателей, не обошли ли они коммунистов, тем более все сидели в тюрьме. И вот на другой день, после 
первого сообщения венгерской революции я послал радиотелеграмму в Будапешт, прося Белокун прийти к аппарату, задавая ему вопросы такого рода, чтобы проверить, он ли сам присутствует, и спрашивая его, какие реальные гарантии имеются относительно характера правительства его действительной политики. Ответ, который дал товарищ Белокун, был вполне удовлетворительный, рассеял все наши сомнения. Оказалось, что в тюрьму к Белокун пришли совещаться образование правительства левые социалисты. И только эти левые социалисты, сочувствующие коммунистам, да еще люди центра образовали новое правительство, а правые социалисты, социал-предатели, так сказать, непримиримые и неисправимые, совсем ушли из партии и ушли, не взяв с собой никого из рабочих. Дальнейшие сообщения показали, что политика венгерского правительства была самой твердой в коммунистическом направлении. Настолько, что если мы начали с рабочего контроля и лишь постепенно переходили к социализации промышленности, то Белокун своим авторитетом, своей уверенностью в том, что за него стоят громадные массы, мог сразу провести закон о переходе в общественную собственность тех промышленных предприятий Венгрии, которые вели к Два дня прошло, и мы вполне убедились в том, что венгерская революция сразу необыкновенно быстро стала на коммунистические рельсы. Буржуазия сама стала власть коммунистам Венгрии. Буржуазия показала всему миру, что когда наступает тяжелый кризис, когда нация в опасности, буржуазия управлять не может. И есть только одна действительно народная, действительно любимая народом власть, власть Совета рабочих, солдатских и крестьянских депутатов. Да здравствует советская власть Венгрии!